What's happening, XRP traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wall. Today is Saturday, April 23rd, and I hope you're well today. Hope you're having a great weekend. And in this short video, we've got an important update for you today. And I wanted to come on and do a public service announcement and give my two cents with regards to the delay in the SEC versus Ripple case. Best case scenario, we're looking at potentially 2023 if this goes to full summary judgment and trial and adjudication uh, i'm going to give my potential uh, thoughts on this again I'm, i don't know everything but i want to give my two cents and what i could potentially see uh, how i could see this play out and potentially uh, it could be a head fake this could be a trap uh, they potentially want us to sell uh, remember 95 percent of cases that the sec brings on uh, settle so just remember the odds are in our favor that we could potentially see a settlement before we get to it though make sure to smash the like subscribe to the channel tick the bell you'll be notified on any future updates also going to do some technical analysis on the xrp chart and what to expect in the days weeks and months ahead and also going to look at the broader uh, crypto market as well and check in and see what uh, bitcoin ethereum and what everything else is doing because we know that uh, xrp is basically tied to bitcoin at the moment uh, and i do think that we could see all-time highs in alt season if all season is right around the corner which i do believe to be the case i don't think we need to see the case end before xrp uh, can surpass its previous all-time highs set in 2018. so we'll jump right into today's content the first news like i said that came out was regarding uh, the ripple versus sec case so this came out from you today uh, resolution likely to come in 2023 ripple Stuart alderoti which is the legal counsel so their their head uh, legal um, representative at ripple again We've seen time and time again, the SEC is delaying this case and that is their motive. They're trying to stall uh, Ripple and XRP as much as they can. What happened recently? Ethereum is no longer going to be launching uh, its 2.0, its staking consensus layer uh, in June, right? So the fact that this case is getting delayed and delayed and delayed makes me think that this is all just to delay and buy time for Ethereum so that they can run Ethereum up as much as they possibly can into that news and buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing is what I think it's going to be. And then after that, we'll see money and profit taking leaving Bitcoin and Ethereum and a lot of that will likely go into XRP. Don't forget in 2018, XRP actually surpassed market cap of Ethereum. It was number two and it was well underway in my opinion to surpassing Bitcoin. The only coins that I think could pass Bitcoin or Ethereum and XRP. I do think XRP is superior. It is the layer one that just works. <laughs> there's no need for Lightning Network. Network, you know, there's it just works, right? Um, so we're gonna move on. Uh, I, I do want to say that though that Ripple is trying their best to resolve this case. The judges are trying their best to resolve this case ASAP, so as soon as possible. But the SEC continues to drag its feet. And again, we know that this case is completely dead on arrival. We know that Ripple is in the right. We know that most likely scenario, Ripple's either gonna win or they're gonna settle. I don't think the, the goal of the SEC was to win the case. I think it was to bring the case on and delay Ripple and XRP as long as possible. Don't confuse the two. Ripple is the digital asset, uh, uh, sorry, Ripple is the company and XRP is the digital asset. And there's actually private equity that you can buy on link to of Ripple shares with XRP, the digital asset. So you can buy Ripple shares with XRP. So how could, how could it be a security? How could you buy a security with another security? It doesn't make any sense. So let's dive into the chart here and what I'm potentially looking at. I was looking at a rounded bottom on the weekly time frame using the real candle bodies. That was invalidated. And I said, if we invalidated that, uh, I, I said, if we lost 80 cents, expect uh, quite a bit of downside. And then sure enough, we lost 80 cents here back on the last week of March. And exactly what I said happened. We had a bunch more downside, so about 10% of downside. So what I did was I zoomed out to the monthly time frame, and I used the wicks and the higher lows on the monthly time frame here and created a rounded bottom. And look where we look where we bounced off of so far and where we're holding right on that rounded bottom support line, that green line here. And basically, we just need to hold that low of 68. Technically, if I just extrapolate this here and zoom in, I do think that 
we could potentially drop as low as 67 cents. I wouldn't want to see us lose 67 cents or that's going to be a major cause for concern and we can likely expect to drop back down to that 55 cent, 54 cent area. Uh, but at this point, if we hold this low, we've only got seven days left in this monthly candle. When the next candle opens, we'll want to stay above 70, 75 cents. We won't be able to dip below 75 cents or else we're going to invalidate this rounded bottom here on the monthly time frame, and we can likely expect more downside just like we did with the weekly time frame. Now, if we keep just moving our cursor here, uh, we could potentially see that into June and July, we start to get back above a dollar. And it's easily possible that we see a type of uh, five wave structure here. So if we get the Elliott wave count, we have the one uh, first wave, second corrective wave, third impulse wave, second corrective wave, which is the fourth wave, and then potentially leading into a fifth wave. And if we take the Fibonacci re uh, extension levels here, uh, and we go back from the previous all-time high to the, all, uh, to the local low here uh, of the bear market, and we extrapolate that out, Bitcoin has already hit its 3.618 Fib extension, and so has Ethereum. And I'll just bring up Ethereum. I've shown this many times. But if Ethereum and Bitcoin can hit their 3.618 extension, why can't XRP, right? Remember, XRP passed Ethereum for number two in market cap back in 2018. And again, we know that Ethereum isn't even fully built out. They're still coming out with Ethereum 2.0. It's just absolute ludicrous. Um, and, and it's obviously just uh, the market is 110% is rigged, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below uh, if you think this is, all, uh, if this is all a movie and we're living in a simulation, basically. Uh, but like I said, if we it, just expect uh, XRP to do what Bitcoin and Ethereum have already done and reached its 3.618, we're looking at about an $11 XRP. But what if it just hits the 2.618? Or what if it hits the 1618, right? What, what if it just does you know, a lot less than what Bitcoin and Ethereum have done? That's still 5 Five to eight dollar XRP. Uh, if we do see alt season, which I think is very close to coming, I think it's just around the corner in the next couple of months. I do think that the broader market, the S and P 500, is going to see a sell in May and go away. And I think we're going to see one more huge move up in the broader market and in the crypto space. Um, also, just want to take a look at the broader market here in crypto. So Bitcoin, Ethereum. You can see here we're still in weekly uptrends. So there's nothing to, to fear here at the moment. You can see Bitcoin has a low high, higher low and higher high. We're just scouting a higher low here compared to the low here at uh, 34,500. So as long as we hold that, we remain in a weekly uptrend. Everybody, I see so many people on there calling for bear market, bear market. It's like, we're in monthly and weekly uptrends. What are you talking about? There's no, in order to be in a bear market, you need to be in monthly and weekly downtrends. So there's absolutely no red flags here whatsoever uh, on the macro level timeframes. And Ether uh, sorry, uh, Ethereum's in a weekly uptrend, but XRP actually had a double top here at 91 cents. So that's going to be the, uh, actually, I guess 92 cents if you, if you uh, get technical there. Uh, but you can see here, XRP tried to change the weekly trend, but it ended up being a double top and coming down, we're just looking for a higher low there compared to that 63 cent area. And if we take a look at the weekly time frame for XRP, uh, we're back below the 10 week moving average, which is a little concerning. Uh, we do have a bear cross here on the stochastic, but the MACD has still, uh, still yet to see a bear cross. It's still bullish for the minute, but it is getting very dangerously close there to seeing a bear cross as well. Something I'm keeping an eye on. Also, we could potentially see a golden cross occur here in the next couple of weeks. You can see the 50 day moving average is getting extremely close to the 200 day moving average. And when those two moving averages cross, that's what we refer to as a golden cross, which usually implies a lot more upside. So again, I just want to uh, reiterate the fact that um, lots of articles online, there's lots of videos saying that the earliest ripple in the SEC case, SEC case is going to end is now at uh, some point in 2023, maybe not even until the summer of 2023, if it goes to full summary judgment trial and adjudication. Uh, remember, 95% of cases settle, and we were expecting a settlement before summer, summary judgment, right, which could come at some point in the summer uh, this, this year, right, which means anytime between now and the summer, uh, we could potentially see a settlement. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we, we are seeing this news at the moment to try to get people to sell um, when they've been holding for so long, right? We've been holding, the case has been going on, it's almost two years, it'll be two years in December. Um, why sell now, right? If you're so, uh, you know, don't fall for this trap that the media is setting. Uh, I bet most people are saying, you know, I'm gonna sell XRP, I'll buy it back in, a, in September or October, you know, a few months before December and 2023 just to be safe. And then one day you'll wake up and XRP will just completely fly. 
and it'll be at all time highs before you know it. You'll miss the move, you'll FOMO in, and then you'll end up buying the temporary top uh, and emotions will get the best of you, right? Don't make decisions based on emotions. Um, like I said, I'm unwavered in my position. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know everything, uh, but I know for sure that I will be holding my XRP bags. I will not be selling. Uh, if you do feel in inclined to sell, and this is not financial advice, I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold. This is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, but if you do feel inclined to sell, I mean, power to you. But just remember uh, how long this coiled spring has been coiling. And a blink of an eye, really, and you could miss it. Um, so this isn't to create FOMO, fear, and certain, you know, fear of missing out. Uh, essentially, this is me being real with you guys and my honest opinion. And at least, you know, if you are going to sell, my recommendation, not my advice, but my recommendation, if it were me and, and I felt inclined to sell, I would at least keep some or sell half or sell a quarter and buy something else if you feel uh, the itch to sell, right? Um, but personally, I know what I own and I won't be selling anytime soon. Uh, going to end it there though. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree with me, disagree with me. Always love thoughtful discourse. Remember, 95% of cases settle. Thanks for joining us again on the Pursuit of Wealth. Make sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel on your way, uh, way out, and we'll see you on the next video.